best technology and the best materials appropriate to the design. Okay. It is when you go below into areas as you have um, people's personal buildings and all these three-story commercial buildings and mm -hmm. whatnot that we have a problem. Right. Yeah. So I can safely say that all the major structures that you see are properly engineered mm -hmm. and properly regulated and managed. Um, the other ones that keep tumbling with, excuse me to say, the Melcom and the one that happened recently, they are the ones who we have a problem with because they don't go through a certification process to achieve a permit to build. Mm -hmm. And that's where we have a problem. All right. So, uh, for instance, how do we curb that then? Because do we, uh, are there people who actively go out and ensure that this is done? Or once a building is done, that's basically it. Then we have to wait for a tragedy to happen before we realize. Well, we have sufficient legislation to deal with it. Mm -hmm. But you know, every legislation comes with its um, enforcement regime or monitoring and regulatory regime. Yeah. In this case, the enforcement and regulatory regimes are the assemblies. And I sincerely believe that assemblies don't have capacity in terms of logistics and manpower to do it. Mm -hmm. The citizenry also has a part to play, but really, um, I think people tend to be more non-compliant than compliant. And in a situation where they think they can get away with non-compliant, you find a lot more people not even bothering to go through the process. Mm. But the processes exist, and I think if we empower the assemblies, especially to do with development control, gradually, even within a medium-term or short-term period of, say, three years, we'll be able to care this problem. Okay. Um, just to wrap up, I mean, Ghana's been actually noted or touted as the gateway of Africa. Um, considering that we have certain constructions which have taken three to five years and still not completed, uh, specifically we'll talk about the Medina Road and you know the Insawam Road and such. As, do you think we're still in that position? And uh, if not, why? Huh. Um... It's good enough to, to dream and conceptualize yourself as a gateway to Africa. Beyond that, you need to be able to strategize how you become that gateway. And I guess putting infrastructure in place is one of that. Mm -hmm. For me, I think our biggest problem is we don't have an integrated um, development plan that takes care of all this. And so you have several road projects going on and sadly you don't have the money or the capacity to finish them within the period you're supposed to do that. Mm -hmm. And as a developing country, our requirement for infrastructure is pretty high. You know, you need to be able to build that infrastructure to be able to then make projections and grow your economy. So it's a tough call. And I think um, the recent talk about private participation or private public participation to put some of these infrastructure in place is in order. Because there's no way you can you can grow or develop without an infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So it's um, it's a good call to call yourself um, the, the gateway to Africa, but then you need to put in everything that must happen: your your ports, mm -hmm. your road system, mm -hmm. your power system, your telecommunication system, your water system, and even extend it to your health and education facility. Indeed. You need to create a whole environment that makes it worthwhile for people to be want to part of that development. Yeah. So. Um, it's a tough call. But so such time that we stop looking at development in three-year terms, you know, and begin to look long-term. 10, 20, yes. Yes, we were, we were, we were really joking. Right. Yeah. Um, there's been a, a question that's been asked at this point in time. Uh, very basic. Um, how many parts sand do you require in regards to a bag of cement? <laughs> a bag of cement to do what? Uh, let's just say... Uh, seal a wall no you you every properly structured contract mm -hmm. has what we call the conditions yeah okay um, and basically sometimes the technical conditions now depending on what you need to do it gives you the technical specs you want to do concrete you want to just plaster a wall yep. you want to screw the floor um, you want to put blocks together anything you want to do it gives you those technical specs so you don't just Mix. Say yes, and people sometimes say, "Oh, we're doing blocks, and we're using so much part to so much." This. Yeah. The point is, what is the objective of what you're doing, and what do you intend to achieve? Mm -hmm. Okay. And even when it's just concrete, there are various forms of what that concrete is expected to achieve. Okay. Yeah. And so, and that is why it's necessary 
to always apply some professional competency to everything that you're doing in the, prof in the um, construction industry. Great. Yeah. Mr. Ajiman, what's your last piece of advice to anybody out there who wants to get into the construction industry uh, or anybody who wants to tender or procure a contract in regards to this? I think you need to be advised. In the absence of a regulatory body that would point you in the right direction, I think you can speak to the associations of the contractors themselves. Mm -hmm. You can speak to the Institution of Engineers, or you can speak to the Institute of Architects, um, and then you can speak also to the assemblies. You know, so um, putting up any structure, even if it's one room, is um, is a lot of takes a lot of energy out of anyone, and therefore you need to be able to do things right. Mm -hmm. And I think you're better off getting the right competencies to do whatever it is that you want to do. So you'll be advised to seek advice from the right um, authorities. Okay. Yeah. I want to say a big thank you for coming in this morning, sir, and uh, assisting us with this particular conversation. This has been Mr. Ose Kwame Ajman, past president of the Ghana Institute of Architects and also uh, part of Casa Associati. Who, uh, they are an architect, designers, and urban planners company as well. Thank you.